Yes, I mean, do you get frustrated with with that? Because you must see it everywhere, in every supermarket you walk into, in every you know facility where they are they are selling the dream. Do you do you get frustrated by the marketing spiel uh, when you when you know what's behind it? The, for the rest of us, we can we can sort of ignorance can be bliss up to a point. Yeah, well, I'm frustrated, but I also feel sorry for the general public that you know are being sold these complete duds. They're being sold these, you know, ed- industrially made food-like items with health halos on them. Um, you know, it's like selling menthol cigarettes is really good for you because uh, they're high in menthol, which is good for your breath or something. You know, it, it, we'll look back at this period of time and, and think, how do we let this happen? How do we let kids' food be... Uh, over 70% ultra processed, you know, and which is four times worse than, you know, Mediterranean countries like Spain, Italy, and France. You know, it, it's a horrendous state of affairs that we've let ourselves get into um, because of no government control, because of the power of the food companies, because of the huge power of the advertising money they've got, because their products are so cheap to make, they can spend it all on advertising, which, you know, you can't if you're making nuts or apples. Uh, you've got no advertising budget. So that's what makes me angry. Um, and it, and I've nearly given up with the government. But I, I do think, you know, talking in, in social media and getting this people to read books and listen to, the, you, know, the, you know, our nutrition so podcasts on Zoe, hopefully we'll get this ground movement going so that people – do get angry and vote with their feet in supermarkets and start saying, give me some real stuff. And, you know, if someone's got a health claim on it, 99% means it's absolute crap for you. And as soon as we start learning that, then maybe um, supermarkets will stop stocking it and manufacturers will change to giving us stuff that's healthier. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, what would you like to see happen? Because like you say, it's, it's, it's hard to educate people when you're up against the might of the marketing machines of these, of these big corporates as well who are driving, driving those sales. So, you know, in a perfect world, what would you like to see happen there? Uh, well, if I was minister in charge of everything, I would, <laughs> um, I would not allow health, bogus health claims on foods. High in this, low in that, high in that, you know, uh, heart healthy, this sort of nonsense. If it was artificial food and uh, every ultra processed food would come with a, a big sticker like cigarettes saying eating ultra processed food is bad for your gut health. It increases your appetite by 25% and increases your risk of obesity and many common diseases. And I wouldn't ban them because I think, um, People want to have, you know, tasty snacks, and often they are very tasty. I'm not saying, you know, they're not, and they have it, but know what you're eating. That's why, you know, I never have a problem really with things like Coca Cola or Pepsi because they don't claim to anymore to be good for you. They might have done 100 years ago, but, you know, everyone knows what well, it's not healthy, is it? But the diet versions do claim to be healthy, and they're not. And uh, etc. So I'd change the labelling. I'd add a tax to them, so that we could subsidise um, whole real foods and uh, make those available to everybody. Uh, I'd make sure that uh, school meals are free to everybody, and we increase the budget from 90p a meal uh, up to something more reasonable, so they can afford real food. And uh, <clears throat> I would um, make nutrition education compulsory and so everyone can cook at least six meals from scratch so there are a few of my uh, my starting manifesto but I'll, vote, I've got more vote for want. tim vote for tim um in terms That's of right. in terms of disease it's interesting i i've been through a ju- just in a, in a small way with my mum who has cancer and so she's on a constant management plan to make sure obviously she she's she's all right with that but she is managing it as opposed to she can't cure it as such um and one of the things that really got flagged to me throughout that process was the dangers of sugars 
and and you know how problematic that can be um in terms of disease in this country i mean how how much can we stave it off with a good diet how how much can we actually affect real change well the epidemiology modeling suggests we could reduce disease by 70 or 80% wow. if we switched from from our current uh, ultra processed food diets to a optimal healthy diet and uh, that's quite doable and so it's the ultimate in prevention uh, the problem is you know we don't have a government or a health service that's geared up for prevention uh, we're just you know, putting sticking plaster over illnesses and treating cancers when they arise rather than actually saying okay well let's take a long-term plan and say well, why does UK suddenly have so many cancers, why well, we have so much obesity, so much diabetes, so much arthritis, so many, so many allergies. Um, you know, we need to take a preventive approach and rather than spending a third of a whole NHS budget in the last three months of our lives, put that forward and just say, let's spread out and make sure that, um, you know, the next generation are going to have much less of these diseases. So it, it does need a, a real total mind change mindset change uh, to initiate this and you know you take cancer most oncologists these are the cancer specialist doctors are not trained in nutrition at all uh, just like most doctors or gps so they very f rare to find anyone who knows what to advise people on and increasingly we're finding that actually diet does have a big effect uh, on cancer treatment um, survival rates, how you, your body interacts with the uh, drugs you might be on for cancer, for yeah. example. And we, we did a huge, we did the biggest study across Europe looking at a couple of hundred people with end stage melanoma who were on immunotherapy drugs, which, um, and we found that the state of your gut microbes at the beginning of, uh, when you went on the treatment were that the difference between being in the top group and the bottom group doubled your risk of survival. Uh, and that's all down to diet. Wow. And yet I doubt I doubt anybody has that discussion with their doctor to say, before you go onto these treatments for cancer or whatever, you need to optimize your diet. You need to optimize your gut microbes because the gut microbes are the key to your immune system fighting the cancer. And instead you get these sort of wacky things or don't don't eat salami or um i had some patients being told don't eat yogurt which is like the opposite they should be uh, uh told others get told to take antibiotics the slightest chance of infection which is the worst thing you can do for your gut microbes so you know there's a lot of stuff that we could be doing um if we thought more about a, a new way of looking at medicine which is with this preventive mindset um and realizing that exercise and diet really are really important treatments that should be part of the, the whole health system and currently are not. It's all about being proactive, isn't it? As opposed to reactive with your, with your, with your health, with your own health and investing in your own health in that way. Um, in terms of the gut microbiome and microbes, can you just break that down for people that don't have any medical knowledge or aren't really aware of what it what it is and how it can affect change. Can you just break down what the gut microbiome is and what these microbes are and how they can affect real change? Gut microbes, we have nearly 100 trillion of them. And they're everywhere from our mouth all the way down to our uh, anus. And most of them are in actually are the lower part of our colon. Uh, called the large intestine, and 99% are there. And you put them all together, it's a huge mass. It's, a, it's about a couple of kilos, but weighs the same as our brain. And collectively, they've got 2 million genes, and they're like chemical factories. So they're converting the food that gets down there. This is things that are high in fiber, not your ultra-processed rubbish, but real food. Real plants get down there and they munch on that fiber. And in return, they produce whole thousands of different chemicals, everything from B vitamins to chemicals that can make you happy or sad and uh, chemicals that really 
tune, finally tune your immune system, your metabolism, your appetite, et cetera, et cetera. And you also interact with medicines like these anti-cancer drugs I was talking mm. about. So they're absolutely crucial um, for our uh, behaving well. And we've lost about half of them in the last 100 years as, as we've made lots of mistakes with our diet and lifestyle. So it's so this is community of, of, of mini pharmacies, if you like, is the way I, I like to think about it. Another analogy is like a, a garden. So your microbes are, uh, you know, you want as many different species as you can. You want to have a rich country, English country gardens with, you know, as many of them brightly colored plants, flowers, uh, borders. Everything looks lovely. The soil is fantastic. You're getting lots of aroma chemicals coming off. You're getting seeds and you're constantly putting new seeds on it. You're watering it. You're, you're fertilizing it. It's perfect. On the other hand, if you're in a really bad state, like most of us are in the UK, um, being fed ultra processed foods with nasty chemicals, you've got, it's like a, a desolate brown, uh, brown site. It's like, you know, some industrial wasteland where the odd weed is there and really nothing survives very long and it's easy for one species to take hold, one particular weed to take over the whole place. And very few chemicals are being produced. So you want to be in that English country garden type and you don't want to be, you want to get out of that wasteland type. That's that's the way I think people should think about it and realize that they're in control of that garden by what you put in your mouth, um, the food you eat, how you eat it, when you sleep, when you exercise, all these things have an effect on how those microbes produce those great chemicals that keep you going. So it's 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 like we've discovered a whole new organ in our bodies. And I think once you once you can visualize that, it changes the way you think about food forever. And what sort of what sort of influences in people's everyday life can can really affect that change other than your diet choices? And is, is it as simple as, um, you know, babies <laughs> and being around babies and, and, and picking up their microbes and pets and picking up their microbes and exposing yourself to different scenarios and different things in different places? I mean, does that stuff help? Yeah, I mean, the number one thing that helps is food. Okay, so, and we can go into, you know, ways to improve that, but it's diversity of plants, this idea of you know, 30 plants a week, different colored plants, etc. cetera, um, fermented foods, those yeah. things will increase your gut microbes. But in terms of lifestyle, we know that people who live in the country have more diverse species than people who live in cities. So. When you do get a chance to go out, do go and hug some trees. Do go and uh, so that's hug, actually that actually makes a, smelly, a difference. Dirty dog. So that stuff makes a genuine yes. difference. If I if I go out into the woods uh, and I walk in, I walk in the woods most days. If with dogs, so if I hug my dog and I hug a tree, that's that's actually going to do some good to me. I can't promise about the tree, but definitely <laughs> we know about the dogs. Um, okay, but. Uh, and and also being in a big family group as well. We know that if you're in a big uh, family, you're going to be swapping microbes more. So the more you can have in a bed, the better. Um, <laughs> that all helps. Um, cats don't help much, they either, though. Uh, for some reason, they don't share they like their cats. microbes with humans very much. No, they're very so independent So stick to your creatures. smelly dog. <laughs> gardeners, there's some evidence that gardeners also have uh, healthier microbes than people who don't garden. So I think there are getting outdoors as much as you can, getting a bit dirty, uh, being sociable. Uh, all these things um, are important, as well as avoiding antibiotics as much as you can, mm. avoiding sterilizing things too much, avoiding the Dettol and uh, antimicrobial sprays, um, all the things that we were taught to do in COVID. Yeah. Uh, we need to sort of unteach ourselves. Well, how do we how do we go about how do we go about 
doing that, Tim, because we were, like you say, it was drilled into us during this period in our lives for a good two years or so that absolutely the anti-back thing was the way forward, you know, wipe all the surfaces down. You know, I mean, I, I have memories of, of me, you know, spraying gel into my hands and then onto the kids and doing all of that and mask wearing. I mean, how detrimental is that in terms of um, upsetting this system that you've just been talking about? Well, it didn't work very well for COVID, so you could say it, it, it's not going to be that harmful for your gut microbes. But I think the mentality is wrong. So they have done studies, for example, of babies um, who spit their dummies, and they divided parents into those that immediately sterilized it and gave them a sterile one, and those that just took it off the floor and stuck it back in their in their mouth. And there's some evidence that the mums who did that, um, their kids had less allergies, for wow. example, which means mm. a stronger, stronger immune system and you, you'd, you'd guess a stronger gut microbiome. So I think um, particularly early life, exposing kids to bugs, normal behaviour, dirt, uh, different foods, not being obsessed about uh, ingredients, making sure they wean on real foods and they're not just given artificial, ultra-processed baby food. I think all these things are really important for introducing bugs into into our guts. Because you've got to remember, we're born sterile. And um, the first three or four years are probably the most crucial in, in building a really good set of gut microbes. So um, don't feel guilty about uh, scraping stuff off the floor. <laughs> of my, which, as a, yeah. as a busy parent, uh, I do most days. <laughs> You're making me feel better for my terrible Uh, behaviour. Yeah, your your children will thank you for it one day. (laughs) So so I come to the bit where I want to ask you about a performance hack for everyday life for people. And I suppose we've just sort of touched on it briefly there. But if you could say to one, if you could say to people, this is one thing that every day you should do because it will give you ultimately in the end better performance, maybe not necessarily just for that one day, but looking at the bigger plan, the bigger picture, what, what would it be? Well, I mean, everything we're into, I'm into a more holistic picture. So, well, I mean, you could say one tip is to look after your gut health, you know? Okay. It's yet to my one hack is every day look after your gut microbes and they'll look after you. And then that allows me the full up question is well, how do you do that, Tim? And I said, Oh, well, glad you asked. Um, <laughs> eat, 30, eat 30 different plants a day a week. Have regular fermented foods. That's not just yogurt and uh, it's kefir, it's uh, kombucha, it's kimchi, it's miso. It's getting this back in our diets that we, we've forgotten about. It's it's raw milk cheeses. Um, just be adventurous with that because we now know that really helps your immune system really quite impressively. Eat the rainbow because that gives you defense chemicals, so colorful foods. Um, um, give your gut a rest every night. At least 12 hours. If you can do more, that's great. And you know, always try and look at what you're eating to, in order to reduce ultra processed foods so you're not getting unwanted chemicals inside you which uh, serve no benefit other than to make companies rich. So I think there's, there might sort of five, five hacks, which is basically just each day think about your gut health and. If you do that, your gut will look after you.